Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tenor or alto saxophone? Which one is right for you? Or maybe you're buying the saxophone for somebody, whether it's going to be a kid or maybe a friend or something like that. How do you know which one to get? Let's get to it. First off, I would ask you, which one sounds the best to you? If you're not super familiar with the differences in the sound between alto and tenor saxophone, here's a list of some songs that were made popular by each one of these instruments. So let's start with alto. So Super Tramp, the logical song, legendary, alto sax. Paul Desmond, Take Five, alto saxophone. Everything by Charlie Parker, David Sanborn, Gerald Albright, primarily plays alto saxophone. Baker Street, Jerry Rafferty, alto sax, absolutely phenomenal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you do have a penchant for classical saxophone music, this instrument absolutely dominates classical saxophone. This is the one that you most definitely want. As far as jazz though, this one probably is not as dominant, but there's not nearly as big of a variance in the popularity between alto and tenor and jazz as it is in classical music. And you're probably asking yourself, hey, what about the most famous saxophone lick of all time? That careless whisper lick. I'm gonna get to that in a second, but I do want you to guess and at the end of this video, I'm gonna tell you which one it is. But is it an alto saxophone? Is it a tenor saxophone? Or is it a C melody saxophone? All right, think about that, ladies and gentlemen. The alto saxophone is smaller. It's usually less expensive, all things being equal. So it's gonna be a little more convenient for a smaller person or child to manipulate this instrument than a tenor just going to be a little bigger. So if price is an issue for you, then alto might be your jam. I would advise you not to really think about price as far as whether you're going to get an alto or a tenor and really think more about which one just speaks to you. Okay. All right, let's move on to tenor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we have a tenor saxophone. This instrument is very identifiable by this little curve in the neck here. If there's any legitimate objective reason people can say tenor sounds better than alto, it's because of the curvature in this neck here. Companies have a lot more flexibility with what to do with a tenor neck than what they do with an alto. And playing a lot of different types of tenor saxophones, you notice a wide variety of shapes, subtle, but different in the way the neck is shaped and constructed. It gives you a nice flexibility to adjust the tone the way a manufacturer would want. Okay, so how do you know if this is the one that you like? All right, who are some guys that have made this popular? There's a Dire Straits song called Your Latest Trick. That's this thing right here, tenor saxophone. You got guys like Michael Brecker, predominantly Grover Washington Jr. played tenor saxophone. Junior Walker, Junior Walker and the All-Stars, tenor sax on that ripping solo shotgun. Yakety Sax, the theme song from Benny Hill, tenor saxophone. All right, and I mean, there's just thousands of other guys that have made this instrument popular. This instrument is going to generally be a little more expensive than an alto. Generally, the bigger they get, the more expensive they get. And also, it's going to be a little more cumbersome for someone that's of a small stature, like a child. Both alto and tenor use the exact same fingering system. However, when you play an A on this instrument and you play an A on alto, you get a different pitch. So to sum that up, if it's confusing, they've standardized the fingering system. So that way it's easy to go from soprano, alto, tenor, and berry. And we've changed the way the notes are written out. Don't really worry about that unless you already play another musical instrument and you're wondering about transposition. This is in B flat, the alto is in E flat. Has a range, both of them, of about two and a half octaves, but most really good players can definitely extend that range. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Most tenor saxophones will come in a case that looks something like this. This is an old Selmer case that I had from a Selmer that I used to have, but this is about the size of it. So here's the alto case. I'm just going to lay that on top of that so you can get an idea of about what that size is. So here you can see the alto saxophone case is a bit smaller than that just to get a size comparison. This alto saxophone case does fit in the overhead at airports, but the tenor sax case doesn't. But obviously there are other cases that you can get that can more comfortably fit your style or just something that's just more convenient for both of these instruments. Okay, now ladies and gentlemen, I just wanna do a short little playthrough on both alto and tenor. I'm gonna use a Cannonball 5J alto sax mouthpiece, I'm going to use a Cannonball 5J tenor sax mouthpiece. Now for both of these, I'm going to use a Van Dorn Red Box 2.5 reed. Not the same reed, but a Van Dorn Red Box 2.5 for alto, and I'm going to use a Red Box 2.5 for tenor. Okay, let's get to it. I'm also going to play the same lick with the same fingering. The pitch is going to sound different, and you can hear that the alto is higher than the tenor sax. All right, let's get to it. All right, I just want to leave you guys with some lasting thoughts before you make a purchase with whatever saxophone you like, or maybe you got some cheddar and you want to get both. But regardless of whether you buy this online or from a music store, you're going to wind up in a music store anyway. When you buy a saxophone from a music store, it's going to come from a factory, go to that music store. The technicians there are going to go through that horn to make sure that it is in optimal playing condition when you get it. More than often, they're going to offer some kind of warranty to go along with it. They may even throw in some free lessons. I mean, you can ask them, hey, I'm buying this for a kid or something. You can set up all that stuff. And even if you can't afford something immediately, they might offer a type of financing option as well. Be sure to ask about that. If you are going to learn to play saxophone and you go to a music store, ask the person there, hey, can you just play tenor a little bit? Can you play alto? I don't really know which one I want. And I'm watching these videos and seeing which one. So at least that way you get an idea of which one is going to really resonate with you. That's ultimately what it should come down to. Which one of these saxophones voices really resonates the most with you. That's what's going to motivate you to get better at playing it and want to practice the thing and go out and gig the most. All right. Almost forgot. So what is it? The Careless Whisper saxophone solo. Is it an alto? Is it a C melody? Or is it a tenor? So if you said alto sax, wrong. Okay. It's not an alto sax. If you said C melody sax, Give yourself a round of applause because you have fantastic ears. However, that also is wrong. It is actually, in fact, a tenor saxophone. I got this information from a person who got it from the source. I believe it. But here's the thing. Apparently, they originally recorded it a step lower and then sped it up. So the sped up sound would actually make it sound more like a C melody instead of a B-flat tenor saxophone. The reasons why they did that, apparently it was just difficult to play that run up to a high of sharp. So that's why they did that. So it is actually a tenor saxophone. So that's all I got for you, ladies and gentlemen. See ya! <laughs>